I'd like to talk about magic today. Not magic tricks, not the kind of magic you would see at a show, but the kind of magic that most human beings believe in. Now, be forewarned, if you're a religious person, I suggest you don't tune in. Also, if you love pit bulls, you'll also be offended by what I have to say. But you've been forewarned. So, when I talk about magic, I'm talking about the belief in inexplicable abilities and phenomena that humans somehow possess that override more sensible explanations, or alternatively, beliefs that are meant to fill in the gaps of things we don't yet understand or don't want to understand. So, conventional religion is probably a great example of magical thinking. The metaphysics of it, at least, this idea that there is some supernatural being and it exists in communion with human beings, has a particular interest in human beings, and it also has revealed itself in various ways to human beings in the form of so-called holy texts. This is a type of magical thinking. The evidence for this is not particularly good, although I suppose for those who believe in it, it is, but it's very difficult when you have this type of magical religious thinking to marshal the type of evidence you would need in the context of something more conventional that most people find convincing. And I actually don't have anything against religion per se, I just don't think that the metaphysics that they purport to believe in are true as a rule. And oftentimes people will think that that's the only type of magical thinking. People on the left, progressives especially, believe that they're very rational and that they don't believe in any kind of magical thinking. And yet they very much do, the blank slate, most prominently as a type of magical thinking, the idea that man is born and has nothing predetermined about him, no ingredients that go into him that make him the way he is and make individuals the way they are. It is something that is infinitely elastic and malleable to be shaped by the environment and the whims of those who wish to shape the environment. That too is a type of magical thinking. And why would it be considered magical thinking? Because it defies all evidence. Although genes are not everything, they are very, very important, and they play a massive role in who we are and what we can do in life. So that's a very conventional form of magical thinking in terms of progressivism and politics. These self-same people, by the way, will be all too willing to insult religious people, more conventionally religious people, for example, Christians, Muslims, etc., etc., because they believe in silly things. These are the same people that allege on their part to believe in things like evolution, and yet when confronted with the reality of evolution, that we exist now against the backdrop of hundreds of millions of years of evolution adaptation that has shaped us and formed us, they will deny that. They believe, for example, again, a form of magical thinking that culture completely overrides the evolutionary history that preceded us and completely overrides human biology pure magical thinking. Nobody who knows anything about anything believes that. Culture coexists with biology, and culture is indeed limited and delimited by biology because culture can only emerge given certain biological priors. And before we proceed to the whys and wherefores, I want to bring up another example, and that is the example of pit bulls. I mentioned this. So pit bulls are a very divisive issue when it comes to dog breeds for bizarre reasons because if you just look at the track record in terms of the stats, they are just de facto, at least in the United States, the most dangerous dog. They constitute six to seven percent of the canine population, but are responsible for something like 70 percent of the most egregious bites and fatal attacks. And they're an interesting breed. There's an entire mythology that has sprung up. For example, there used to be nanny dogs. And when I'm talking about pit bulls, I'm talking about all the subbreeds out there including but not limited to the American Bully, the American Pit Bull Terrier, the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and finally the American Bulldog. I am lumping them all in there because I'm sure there are subtle differences, but they all fit the criteria of breeds that had a history of being bred for fighting. Pit Bulls or the Pit Bull-like breeds, because there are a bunch of them, were never nanny dogs, Pit Bull advocates, concoct this to justify it. But the point is, is that you might get in a discussion with pit bull advocates, right? These are people that think that pit bulls are just like any other dog. 
And I've actually conversed with some of these people, and they will agree when I make absurd propositions and statements such as, yes, pit bulls are identical to golden retrievers and Labradors. There's no difference. There's absolutely no difference between the breeds. All dog breeds are identical and the same. They will agree to that. Because they have the conviction that the only thing that mediates dog behavior is how it is raised and how it is reared by the owner. There's no other factor. There's no such thing as temperament, no such thing as prey drive, no such thing as decades or perhaps not centuries of breeding for specific traits and morphology. They're all identical from chihuahuas to Great Danes to Labradors to Greyhounds to Pit Bulls. It's all the same. And they will agree with that. Until you disagree with them and you say, well, you don't actually believe that. Then they'll bring out a list of dogs that are allegedly more aggressive or more dangerous. Most recently, I heard that poodles are far, far more dangerous and aggressive than any pit bull. And so they apparently do believe in temperament and in the nature of certain breeds when it suits them. Why am I talking about this? This is also kind of magical thinking. On the one hand, they purport to believe that all dog breeds are identical, that there's no such thing as temperament or bred behavior. It's only about how you treat the dog. There are no differences in personality or tendencies, nothing like that. But they'll also bring up lists of dogs that are allegedly far more dangerous and more aggressive than pit bulls like poodles. Poodles apparently are one of the most dangerous dogs out there, supposedly. I've yet to see data to back that up, but, but that's a claim I recently encountered. Why is this magical thinking? Because it is contradictory. And this exists as well in religious thinking the kind of magical thinking that needs to be squared against reality. The question, the real question is, why do people engage in this type of thinking? Why do people engage in this type of magical thinking? And I think it's kind of obvious. Man probably has an innate need to believe in something that is somewhat inexplicable and ineffable. And at the same time, that need typically coincides emotionally with what human beings feel and want. So it might actually be the case, and I would argue it, that pit bulls are a lot more dangerous than poodles. But if you're emotionally attached and you're part of, say, the pit bull lobby, and there's a pit bull lobby, believe it or not, very strange that the dog would need a lobby to justify its existence. But nonetheless, this is a thing. And if you believe that, then you will apply magical thinking to defend your emotional needs and beliefs. And the same thing is done in religion. And the same thing is done when it comes to progressive politics. When it works, they will credit reality and things that don't seem that magical. But when it doesn't, they will resort to magic to explain certain things. Now, we can all agree that reality at times is not very pleasant. But not everyone resorts to this type of magical thinking. Probably everyone engages in some kind of magical thinking. I suppose I do too. But in general, these types of magical thinking that I mentioned, whether it's religious political, cultural, or the belief, for example, that all dog breeds are identical, allegedly. Assuming they don't really believe that, that a Labrador is identical on average to a pit bull. These beliefs exist so as to support emotional stability in such individuals. Most people don't want to be wrong. They don't want to exist in a state of contradiction. But they kind of have to in some cases. But inevitably, we all have certain contradictions we have to live with and exist with. And some people, rather than acknowledging these contradictions, create, probably subconsciously, narratives that are effectively magic. They're not real, but these narratives work for them, work to support their egos, their emotional stability, and oftentimes to the detriment of the rest of us. Now, magical thinking in many ways can be tested. For example, you could talk to a deeply religious person and ask him if he has a problem with his heart if he would prefer to have a skilled heart surgeon work on his heart, say for a heart transplant, or have people simply pray for him and see how he reacts. Maybe if he's truly a sincere believer, he will prefer the prayer. Alternatively, you might ask a progressive who believes in the blank slate and that all human beings are identical in every respect, whether or not they would prefer a high school dropout who failed out of 10th grade and couldn't ever get good grades to fly a plane with minimal training versus somebody who not only did really well in school, but also has an established record as a pilot, and then ask that individual which they would prefer for their flight. It's a pretty extreme example. I think only the nuttiest and looniest of progressives would not prefer the actual trained pilot. 
And finally, you could ask any of these pit bull fanatics whether or not they would prefer to be locked in a room full of poodles and Labradors or some kind of pit bull breed or mix, on average, what they would choose. And I think, in this case, probably the most ironic instance is that many of them actually believe that all dog breeds are identical, or at least the temperament of your average pit bull is identical to the temperament of an average poodle or Labrador retriever. And so in this case, they might actually opt for the pit bulls because they actually think many of these dog breeds are identical in temperament and breeding history, et cetera, et cetera. They might, for example, believe that pit bulls were actually nanny dogs. So yeah, you can test magical beliefs. They exist to provide succor, assurance, security in the emotional sense to people, but oftentimes they don't map onto reality. And in the worst of cases, magical beliefs can damage individuals as many people have discovered, whether it comes to religion or strange, bizarre, progressive values, or even people that believe that pit bulls have the same temperament on average as Labradors. They find out too late that that usually isn't the case. Much appreciated for you tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. As always, you guys are the absolute best. Really appreciate the support. And for the rest of you, if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz, like the video, comment, subscribe, share, that'd be much appreciated. Until the next time, if I'm still alive, I will check you out later. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.